How do we fix the reptile keeping community? It's a tough question. So tough that I would prefer not to make this video. I would prefer to just make a video on care of a certain species and that would certainly be easier. Some people wouldn't agree with some of the points I might make in that video if I made it and that would be fine. Uh, if it was a reptile care video I was making. This video, however, contains thoughts and beliefs that I hold deep, deep in my heart. It's not nearly as easy to hear negative feedback on, on such a topic as this. And it hits much closer to home. So how do we fix the reptile keeping community? I guess a few other questions have to be asked first. Why would we even want to fix the reptile community in the first place? Would it be better off left to its own devices? Would it be better to ignore the gaping holes of division that face us? Let PETA and their lobbyists have an easy task of conquering a community that is already divided? Many reptile keepers may not care about the community aspect at all. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. To a keeper like that, it's, it's a hobby they enjoy by themselves. So if the ability to share the keeping of these animals in a very public way disappears, no loss there. That keeper will continue to keep and keep quietly to themselves. But what about those of us who want to continue to share our love and appreciation for these often underappreciated and misunderstood creatures? What happens to us? What If that goes away, it ruins the hobby for us. In my mind, I can hear a private keeper under their breath saying, good riddance. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Um, this has been weighing on me. In addition to war, rumors of war, a constant lack of faith in so-called leaders in our country and other countries is it, too much to bear at times. And I've been, I've been blessed to come to know the Lord these past few months, and I take solace in that. Um, I tell myself that it would be easier to fall away from what is likely a futile struggle here in the reptile world on, and focus solely on building that relationship. Yesterday, I almost made the decision to do just that. But this morning, this morning I came to my senses. This community is worth fighting for, I believe. Not just uh, the fight for the ability to keep these animals freely and openly, the fight for what I believe in, my belief, that this reptile keeping community is home to the most diverse group of people on the planet that instead of letting that diversity divide us as diversity can, we can allow the strengths of each individual to shine through to make it that much stronger. This is the way I feel about all God's children, and I will be and have been cast aside by non-believers for this, but I do not care. Uh, I know that those of us who truly believe will triumph over the forces that seek to drive us apart. I know it like I know that the sun will rise in the east. Okay, I'm getting out in the weeds a little. I like it there though. It's easier to hide reptiles in. Reptiles like a safe place to hide. And at times like these, what we need to do is be out in the open. It's not safe, but it's necessary. Many are doing it day by day, and I believe that's the answer. Get out there. When you see someone else putting themselves out there, Support them. The answer to how to fix the reptile keeping community is support. The challenge that lies therein is that because this community is so diverse, people are so different from one another, support is maybe the last thing that you might have in mind. I urge you though, if you feel that you can't support a fellow keeper, then don't. If you disagree, with them so much that you would seek to defame them, confront them personally. If that doesn't work, bring another person to the table. If that doesn't work, bring one more, and so on. If your claim 
to defame is as righteous as you think it is, you won't have any trouble finding that support. Do I believe that there are those in the community that do us harm publicly? Absolutely. Attempting to drag them through the mud as a flagrant display of virtuous signaling to the community is not the answer. It's not the answer that works. It, it is a temporary justification to let your own frustrations get some much needed fresh air. The problem is it ends up hurting more than helping as far as community is concerned. Now, more than ever, the community needs to have a united front. So how do we achieve this united front? I'm sorry to say that I don't know. I don't. I wish I did. This is a cry for help. Can you please give me a baby snake now? Hey, little snakey. <laughs> Daddy. Yeah? What is, is its name? It doesn't have a name yet. Hmm. How about I can name it Sparkles? You want to name that snake Sparkles? Yeah. Hello, Sparkles. <laughs> Sparkles? He's looking at me. Hello, little Sparkles. Sparkles is such a cute snakey. <laughs> you got a little tail on the teddy. <laughs> you little cutie. Daddy. Yes, dear. Why do snakes always take their tongues out? Snakes stick their tongues out to smell you. <laughs> so this... So Sparkles is smelling me. Yep. <laughs> you funny little Sparkies. Huh? <laughs> you are just the cutest snake I have ever seen. This snake is not coming out fully. Why is it not coming out fully? Uh, he's probably a little bit scared. So Sparkles is a he? Sparkles is a he. Hope Sparkles is not a girl. <laughs> then who baby snake is a girl? Uh, there's some other baby snakes out there that are girls. Oh, then I'm going to name one Sparkles. Okay, T. Daddy? Yes, T. Instead, can I then name this one Chocolate? Chocolate? That's a good name, yeah. You chocolatey. <laughs> you get that name. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Any other snakey in my seat? Hello, chocolatey. I'm going to tell mommy that I named one of you snakes chocolate. Okay. Daddy, yes, this see. snake could be my snakey since I named it chocolate. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but when I need to go to sleep, I need to figure out which one is chocolate? We need to find one with this color. That's a boy. That one is that color and is a boy. But what if one's another color? That's chocolate is. That's the only snake we have here that looks like chocolate. Mm hmm Because it has chocolate color on it. You know chocolate? I named it chocolate that because it has chocolate. You chocolatey, not sparkles. Hey, Daddy. Hey, what if I had a baby, you sparkly snake? Baby snakey's parents shade all the eggs? Hey, keep it quiet, snakes. Are we trying to have some peace down here? You're still sniffing me. So, you're a little cutie. You get to call it that crazy snake that's name is the glitter. That? All of the snakes could be named Yank Sparkle. Oh, sorry. Why is it not 
crawling. Just comfortable. <laughs> you, you little cutie. Don't you want to snuggle with your little parents? What are you supposed to do about your parents? You need, if the tent is open, you want to crawl in there? Daddy, what's this little baby snake's parents' names? Carl and Charlotte. Oh, Carl and Charlotte. I named it this snake Chocolate. Chocolate? Oh, how cute. Goodbye. Why do you want to uncrawl like a donut? <laughs> <laughs>